Hey there, this is Mikhail at Scalability, and today I'm going to show you how to make sense of data in a bank transaction format or an account transaction format uh, so it's easy to view with dates and categories. So in front of us we have some transactions as you can see, um, they don't quite make sense. Looking at this you can't really get a picture for patterns and this is what we normally get when we look at a bank statement or if you go doing accounts these might be loads of um, you know, costs and expense, expenses, costs, um, and some income as well. So the first thing I'd normally do is I'd always get a date column. So I can see that we have a date column here, but I normally like it within a month, uh, a monthly format. So what I'm going to do is, is sort of summarize each one um, together in, inside a month. So for example, we could just say March 2019, but the simplest is if you use the end of month formula uh, on that, fix it so it stays within that column, and I'm going to do minus one and then plus one so that it picks the end of the month before, and then you add one so it becomes the, the first of the current month. And then basically all of these, this column is going to be the first of the current month. I'm going to lose the first row. Essentially. So that's the first step. So let's say we were to, oh, and the second thing is to get the movement. As you can see, we've got debits and credits. Um, which one's positive? So here we can see some podcast sales. So let's go to that minus that because I want to come to be positive. And then the other side must be cost, so that must be negative. Cool, so we have a month and a movement. So let's create a new tab. And in here, when's the first? Actually, we can do the same formula. So now let's do the minimum of this column. And that'll give us the first month. It's not formatted in a month format. So let's go to format, number, date. So yeah, it starts there. And then we're going to do the end of month, end of that month which will be um, end of Jan, and we'll add one, so it's the end of the next one. And I'll copy that formula across, and then we can see we'll start getting all the months for that year. So let's do four years, see how far the data goes. Uh, and I'm just going to do total. total. So here I'm going to do a sum ifs. So let's sum movement if monthly date is equal to the day. So again you can see every month we make some money, we lose some money and overall here we've lost more money than we made, here we've made more uh, and so on. So one of the first things to do once we've got this is to check is this actually all the data. So um, I would put a little check here. We can see if there's a sum of 6,153. Let's do the same here. So 6,153. So I know that's right, but just to make sure that if something goes wrong, um, we, we know it's right. So we'd say, I'm just going to put total there, or total data. I'm just going to do a sum of everything. A sum of all of that. Then I'm going to do uh, total here. Let's call this tab summary. Or yeah, summary. And then here, total summary. And I'm going to do a sum of that column. Oh, and it's formatted as a date. I want this to be a number, so it's just a number. We can see they're the same. And a nice way to, to check that these are always are the same, like if it moved just a little bit, you might notice it, is to do one minus the other. Again, it's not a date, so let's make that, um, make that a number. And I always make it green. So anything, any green cells for me is always a check cell, so it should always be zero. Uh, and then let's say, for example, something got deleted, all of a sudden it's easy to spot. Whereas here, you'd always have to be checking, oh, are they, you know, are they the same as here? If you're looking for things to be zero and they're not zero, it's quite obvious. Um, so that's good, it's the first step. So we now we've got all our data and we can see some, some movement 
on a monthly basis. But let's say we wanted to break it down a little bit more. So we could say, um, we're going to apply a filter here. Uh, data, filter, there we go. And then let's put a category. And then we put category here. And uh, maybe let's put everything that's positive is going to be in the credit side. So I could either filter on positive or just filter on everything that's not blank. Let's call this uh, sales or income if this is um, whatever you call it if you're doing your or salary. Um, if you're, let's say you're doing a, some sort of personal, uh, personal bank account. So that would all, let's say that's all salary. Um, okay. And then if we put, let's put salary here. Or uh, let's put for category, just to make it easy so we know we're not missing anything. Let's put um, a unique of this column. Oh, category class. There we go. And salary appears because it's still in the category. But now we're going to do the same as this formula, really. So I might just copy that formula down because I fixed uh, fixed the cells. It's pointing to the right place. And then here I'm going to add another criteria. I'm going to make that category. The category has to match this. I'm going to fix it. And then copy it across. Let's say I'm just going to copy it here because I'm expecting more categories along the side here. Great, so we've got some salary uh, going across. It seems to be moving around every month. Um, cool, so we've got that. Uh, now let's go and see some, try and add some more information, make some more sense of this. So, categorize salary, so let's remove that from here. Um, so let's say Nimma stores, that looks like some groceries. So we'll go to Nimma. I've only gone there once. Uh, groceries. And then let's go to food. And then let's go to um, Burrito Parlor. Okay, again, eating out. So you could just go through each one, but that's going to be quite, I think that's quite long. So let's try and see if there's um, uh, any patterns here. So I'm going to create like a, another tab and call this list. I'm going to go unique of all, all the transactions. Hopefully it summarizes it. So here there's 28. Whereas if I was to go into here, there's 69. So we've, we've halved the amount of stuff that we've got to categorize. So let's put category. So uh, let's call that salary. That's food. Um, what would that be? Some sort of reward. Uh, maybe this is a. Uh, Bank transfer to save maybe savings. Uh, some withdrawals. Some fees. Let's put these both as fees. Uh, eating out. So all these categories I'm typing out. Maybe it'd be better if we decided what they were. So let's say salary, food, reward, savings. I'm hoping there's going to be some patterns that start repeating. Um, yeah, let's hope this some. So let's put our this is our category list. This is our these are our actual transactions which we're going to categorize. Um, so to make it easy to categorize, so we don't make any mistakes, let's do data validation. And so these these categories have to be from this list. There we go, and now we get a drop down. So say this is savings again. Uh, this is me, this is me. Let's say this is uh, 
This is me transferring money to myself again, maybe. This is some, um, let's call it uh, big spend, maybe like big purchases. So, let's say I'm Gumtree or something, I've bought something, and I've sent some money to this person. So, let's call this big purchases. This is uh, charity, savings again. Lots of savings. Transport, that's a cool. good category. So let's add transport as a category. And then we'll here. Um, let's call this big spend. Home and garage as well. Let's say that's a big spend. Computer tech. So that's a company, let's say that pays me. So again, that's going to be salary. Great Northern transport. Um, this is me, so savings again, Fred's Fish, this is eating out, uh, H3G, this, this is mobile again, burrito, eating out, salary, private rewards, savings, uh, and transport again. Cool. So as you can see, the unique has automatically picked out some of the things. Unique of column L. Ah, so these categories haven't flowed through. So I've, I've, I've decided what I want everything to be. Uh, I'm going to remove what we've done, what we've done before here, and instead we're going to um, put out the category. So whenever it says this, we want it to actually like, say it's summarised. A little placeholder there. Place that. Okay, cool. So now we categorized everything. So if we go back to the summary, we can see that it's picked out all the categories. Um, that we had with a few more, but expanded past the list because it's a, a dynamic formula. There we go, so now we're starting to get a better understanding of what's happening with our money. Uh, let's see if we can make this a little bit nicer. So, still not super clear, maybe because the spending isn't um, into maybe a better data set or more, a bit more real. Um, it looks like there's just a lot of savings, some salary. I didn't actually. I oh, bought a little bit of food. There's lots of rewards. Uh, yeah. Okay. So maybe need to work on the data. But if there was uh, some trends here, you'd hope that they would uh, reflect and flow through. There we go. Oh, and then one last check to make sure that we've um, got everything all right. So let's put a check here, and we say, let's check that everything here. Um, the sum of all of that is here. Once again, make this a number. That's all this, and really, it should match the monthly total. So I'm going to do that formula less this to get a zero. And so now we know that everything that we've categorized it's all been categorized it's matching this because for example let's say I hadn't categorized something all of a sudden you would get some uh, items missing and you know that this is actually not all your data um, so let's go back fix this we categorize it and then when we come back this all matches, so you know you, this is everything that you, um, everything in your transactions, and then you can be confident that any information or analysis that you do on this is based on all your transactions. Cool. Thanks for watching.